getting straight into it, our first example is how many intersection points are there between y equals x squared and a circle that has a radius of 4 and a centre of 0 and 6? Okay, so I'm going to start out this question just by inputting that quadratic into my y1. Um, next thing I want to do is head into zoom, and in my zoom I'm just going to square up that zoom um, to make sure that when I input my circle in that it is actually a true circle. So I'm going to head to number 5 and make that um, a square viewing window. From here I can access my circle drawing through the draw menu um, and but actually one of the better ways to do this is via the main screen. So I'm going to quit out of my um, graph and I'm going to go into my draw menu from the main screen. So second draw um, and I want to draw a circle so that's my number nine there. Okay, so in here what I need to put in is my centre of my circle, so the coordinates for the centre are 0 and 6, and then the radius of my circle is 4. So if I input each of those values separated by a comma, close my brackets, and then press enter, that circle will get drawn onto my screen. So there it is, I can see it there. Now I thought another nice thing to do with this would be to cover how I could draw that circle um, as well as using the draw menu but also actually using what it would be if we split it out and made it into a function, so using our y equals. Um, so what I've got on back on my question here is just the mathematical equation um, of my circle. So here it is, so x squared plus y minus 6 all squared equals to 16. Um, and then my rearranged equation, so what would this would be look like if we made y our subject? So 6 plus or minus, so it's going to be split into two equations, one positive, one negative. So 6 plus root 16 minus x squared and 6 minus root 16 minus x squared. Um, so I'm going to input those into my y2 and my y3 and we'll have a look at how good our uh, drawn circle is. Okay, so there it is. There's my uh, two equations there. Um, and I'm just going to graph those. Okay, and there we go. Um, it matches up pretty well with that circle we, that we drew from um, the draw menu. Um, if you're interested in why it doesn't match up perfectly, if we use the trace button here, and I just focus in on that red Y2 there. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to move that trace along. You'll see that um, we get up to an X value of negative 3.9, so that is still giving us um, a valid Y value because when we've done 16 minus that squared, um, we've still got a positive value in our root. You can see the equation up the top there. Um, but when we go forward just a little bit more, um, you can see there if any, any value bigger than 4, that's going to give us a negative root, so therefore that value um, does not exist. Um, and these are our kind of our points of undefined gradient on our circle as well. So that's why um, our, we are going to be unable to graph that there. Okay, moving on to our, oh, sorry, I should have answered, properly answered the question as well. Obviously, we have four points of intersection. The second question we're going to look at is we've got our quadratic y equals x squared still, um, and we're looking at the equation of the tangents to that quadratic at x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. Is there any pattern? Um, and what would be the gradient of the tangent at x equals 4? So we're going to make a little bit of a conjecture there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we want to get rid of that circle that we had before. We're, again, we're still using the same quadratic, so we can keep that. Um, but that circle's got to go. So back into our draw menu, second draw again. Um, the first thing there just says clear draw, so we can use that just to get rid of the circle. Um, from here, we're going to be using a different draw function this time, and that is number five, which is our tangent. So in here, um, we're going to draw the tangent at x equals to one, but first I want to set it up. So I'm going to use that graph button um, that you can see corresponds to the menu there. Um, I'm just going to change the color. So I don't want my line to be blue because that's the same as my quadratic. I'm going to change it to red. Um, and I want to store that tangent into my y2. Um, and that's going to let me look at it a bit later on. So I'm going to press OK there. Um, and I'm drawing it at x equals to 1. So if I just type in the number 1 and press Enter, that will draw that tangent there. So I can see there it's got the equation 2x plus negative 1. I'm going to go through and do the next two. So again, back into that draw menu, uh, down to number five. Again, I'm going to use the menu and change the color. I'm going to store that into my Y3 now. Press OK. 
uh, that's at x equals to 2. So there you go, there's the next one. Um, and then I'm going to do the third one, so exactly the same again, number 5. Back into my menu, change the color, I'm going to store that into my y4, press OK, and then I'm finding the tangent then at x equals to 3. So there it is there. Okay, so now I'm just going to have a look at those three tangent equations that I put into my y equals. So can I see a pattern here? Well, it looks like my gradient's going up by a factor of 2. So it starts out at 2, then it goes to 4, then to 6. Um, and if I'm looking at my y-intercept, I'm starting at negative 1, then I go to negative 4, and then I go to negative 9. So the first one, there's a difference of uh, going down by 3. And then for the next one, I go down by 5. So maybe my next equation, um, and I don't want it to be green again. I'm going to change that as well, make it orange. That looks lovely. All right, so now I'm going to think, okay, well, that might be 8x plus, and then if I was going down by 7, um, that would then be negative 16. So let's have a look at that. Um, we'll graph that, and then we'll draw another tangent. All right, so there we go. So now if we draw another tangent, um, second draw again, I'm going to use that number five. Um, again, I'm going to use my menu. I want to use, I'll use black this time. Now, if I've got it right, um, and if we're thinking really carefully, um, that black line should completely cover the orange line. I shouldn't be able to see the orange line at all if I'm right. Um, so I'm going to press OK. Again, I'm looking at that at my x equals to four. And there we go, no orange line can be seen at all, so I've got the exact same equation that I was after there. Okay, my very last equation, I'm sketching a vertical line x equals 5 um, and the horizontal line y equals 3. And I want to find the equation of the straight line that intersects with these lines and has a y-intercept of negative 2. Um, so again, I'm just going to get into my calculator. Okay, so again, I'm going to use that draw menu to help me solve this problem and a few of the different functions. So I'm going to go into um, second program to bring up my draw menu again. Um, and the first thing I want to look at is put that horizontal, horizontal line through y equals 3. So I'm going to go down to horizontal and then I want that line at y equals 3. Quit out of there again and we'll put in the vertical line at x equals to 5. So now number 4 and at x equals to 5. The next thing I'm going to do is still use that draw menu again, but I'm going to put some points in. So I go tab across with my navigation key until I'm on the points heading, and then I want to turn some points on. Um, so again, I'm going to use, the, use this in the main screen, um, and I'm just going to point on that point of intersection. It's going to be at um, x coordinate 5, y coordinate 3. So I'm going to put a point there, and you can't really quite see it because it is on that um, on that line there. Um, but I'm going to put one more in as well. Um, and this one, I'm just going to copy that command down. This one's going to be at that y intercept that we wanted, so 0 and negative 2. Um, and this one's going to come up really clearly on the screen. And there we go, we can see it there. Um, so now when I'm thinking about my gradient, this just this information is helping me think about maybe what my line's going to look like. So I'm going to have a positive gradient because it's going to be going through those two points. Um, and we're going to be going up in the y direction, a difference of one, two, three, four, five units, um, and also five units across in my x direction as well. So I'm going to have a gradient of positive five divided by five. Um, so that gives me a gradient of one, and I can see there that I want my y-intercept to be negative two. So when I go into my y equals, um, I'm going to put this in my y2 just because I want it to be a different color. But I'm expecting my gradients going, my um, equation is going to be x, um, remembering that you've got a gradient of 1 as your x multiplier there, um, and your y intercept of negative 2. Uh, so when I graph that line, I can see that hits directly through that coordinate point that I put in there and through my intersection of my horizontal and my vertical lines. Alrighty, well, I hope you got something out of that today, and I'll see you next time.